Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to kind of conclude, I guess, our free comic book day trilogy, as it were. Uh, the first video was just kind of like my vlog of the day itself. And then our second video was my interview with Jerry Duggan, who is the writer of Secret Avengers, which uh, is a new Avengers team that has Venom on it, which is pretty awesome. So please go back and watch those videos if you haven't seen them. I'll put links to them down below, but they're most, my most recent videos too, right before this one. Uh, but yeah, definitely check them out because if I, you know, I want to do more interviews at some point, and the best way to do that is if those videos get views and uh, and people are talking about them and uh, you know and I get feedback from you guys what you think I did well what you think I didn't what I can improve on please let me know because I'd like to do more interviews for you guys in the future for sure with other creators um, maybe even one day with these guys uh, this is Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman's free comic book day spider-man book that they did with other creators because there's a cool backup story in here with Peter Parker and Miles Morales where they're trying they're fighting but over which is the best pizza in New York which I thought was awesome because they're from different like uh, you know areas of New York City which is really cool and then they run into the shocker and he is from also a different area and he's telling them hey my place is the best uh, after they beat him up and it's pretty fun actually I like that story a lot uh, but the the main book we're gonna talk about the main story we're gonna talk about is the the free comic book day one so if you don't want any spoilers I would say you can go get this for free if you haven't picked up a copy at your local comic store or if they're out of them for whatever reason you can go to the Marvel website and I think Comixology, and I believe these are free to download at both of them. Definitely at the Marvel site for sure, but maybe Comixology too. Uh, so this is free, so feel free to go read it first and then come back here and watch this afterwards because uh, it does have some spoilers in it and it's going to be talking about you know the big event coming up called Absolute Carnage, which starts in August. Technically it starts here, but the book one or whatever will come out in August. Uh, so yeah, so let's dive into it. I mean, it, this, the book starts off with uh, quote unquote Eddie Brock uh, narrating and talking. And, uh, you know, at first I was really not a fan of this dialogue or this page uh, with the nine panel grid. I thought it was not a very good use of the nine panel grid. Um, you know, it's just we're just having these like moments with Eddie just basically exposition dumping all over us. But there's actually kind of a reason for it. Uh, you find out that this is actually not Eddie Brock. So for those of you who are wondering or confused by that, I saw Donnie Cates, I guess, clarifying that on Twitter. And he was saying, hey, look, I guess I didn't do as good of a job as I thought. I know some people out there, like myself included, understood what he was going for. But I think there were some people that were confused, thinking that this was actually Eddie Brock. Uh, and it's not. It's, uh, it's actually Cletus Cassidy, and he's disguising himself. And for those of you who are wondering, hey, how can the symbiote do that? Uh, apparently, uh, also explained in t on Twitter uh, by Donnie Cates after it came out, was uh, the powers of the symbiotes have now changed once they've connected with Null. So that's where these new abilities, some of them not so new, but the ones he are claim that he's claiming are new, um, they're new because of their interaction with Null. So after that first story arc where, you know, the symbiote, like Venom symbiote, got in contact with it. And then also when Carnage is be, you know, being resurrected in his in that solo issue that they did, um, those are him, you know, those characters connecting to Null and Null kind of in a way unlocking new abilities for the symbiotes or, or giving them access to abilities they had before, but giving them, you know, easier access to them. So apparently the symbiote can shapeshift completely and make you look like someone else. And we saw that at the end of the last uh, Venom issue number 12, where the symbiote walks out into the, the streets and it turns itself into Eddie Brock to look like Eddie Brock. So there's an Eddie Brock walking around and then there's, you know, uh, an, a, a, the suit as Eddie Brock walking around uh, with, you know, all by itself. And then Eddie Brock walking around with Dylan, as we see in the magic Venom stuff in Venom 13 and War of the Realms, which I find a way I want to do a little amendum there, uh, addendum there. Uh, people were saying like, hey, um, you know, that that symbiote that attacks in War of the Realms that may be the actual symbiote, the one that's pretending to be Eddie Brock. That could be the one that, uh, you know, gets taken away by Malekith. And the the magic venom is Eddie Brock. So both symbiotes may actually be in the story. And I was like, you know what? I feel dumb for not thinking of that, actually. So thank you guys for correcting me in my comment section. That's why we do the show, too, because sometimes I get things wrong or I interpret things wrong. And you guys are here to save me for that. So thank you so much for that. Uh, so in this one, though, yeah, I understood it's not Eddie Brock. You have these two guards kind of talking and they're like, yeah, Eddie is, you know, he's just a crazy person. So since he doesn't have a symbiote anymore, he's not Venom. We locked him up at Rikers Island. And then what's really neat is you actually get Lee Price show up. And I'm not a big fan of this character, uh, especially like at first I kind of liked it. I was like, oh, it's a psychopath that is manipulating the, the Venom symbiote after it was bonded to a hero. That's kind of neat. It's maybe he'll twist it and turn it back into a villain or anti-hero or something like that. But the symbiote resisted the best it could to Lee Price. But because Lee Price had all these like, you know, um, you know, government enhancements in his mind or something and mind tricks uh, put on him, 
he was able to control the symbiote, actually have full control over it. So I, I thought that was kind of a neat concept, and, and I'm glad it didn't last long, but at the time I was like, oh, it's kind of a cool concept. Uh, but, you know, so you get him here, and he's like mocking Eddie, and he's saying like, yeah, you know what they call me he in here? And he's got a tattoo of like the, the Venom symbol on his chest, and Eddie just starts laughing at him. Eddie's like, dude, what? He's like, you're not Venom. And then he's like, he starts laughing cr like harder and harder and harder, and then you see here, He's got uh, the null eyes. And then what happens is he becomes uh, Carnage. And Carnage is not in his Carnage symbiote. Cletus Cassidy, so that's another thing Donny Cates clarified uh, that I was like, oh, okay, I get what he's going with here. Uh, but he had to clarify for some people on Twitter. And again, that's that's a problem. Like he, I noticed a lot of times he has to come out and clarify things. And this is one of my issues with him is, is his writing is that he is sometimes not clear. Like sometimes I'll get him and sometimes I won't get him. But there are people out there that are just continuously not understanding what he's writing in here. And I'm not going to sit here and say those people are dumb by any means. Uh, I ha would have to read the book a couple times to kind of piece it together. And like I said, sometimes I still don't. And you guys tell me things. So, so that's kind of the issue with him is that he has all these big ideas and he has trouble putting them on the page or being clear about them on the page. And I don't want something spoon fed to me. Uh, and like I said, some of these ideas I am getting, I understand what he's doing, but there are people out there that are younger than me who maybe haven't read comics as long as me and who this book is kind of for because I would say I know there's older Venom fans that are enjoying this book but me as an older Venom fan I'm not enjoying the stuff he's retconning for the sake of telling this new story whereas new readers wouldn't know that stuff they wouldn't get upset over those retcons so I feel like this is the, this is a book for them and then yet he's not writing at their level the reading level so it's it I, and I could see why people get disconnected to this book sometimes even if they're enjoying it i feel like sometimes people get a little disconnected so another thing he explained as eddie brock kills uh, lee price here uh and eddie brock i should say he kills lee price he takes the symbiote piece because obviously everyone who's ever been bonded to a symbiote has a piece of it in them still so he rips it out so he can you know keep it back and obviously that's the goal here that's what he explains in exposition city on page one here he's just basically saying like null is coming he's he's trapped on clintar he's telling this to the world he's you know basically this video is hoping will go out there so that the world knows his plan in some way and uh and you know carnage is as eddie brock is trying to frame eddie brock he's like yeah all these cameras are looking at me they're gonna know that eddie brock is doing this and this is one of my issues with this book and i'm sure it's going to be explained but I, I i'm still trying to think of like who why why does carnage care to frame eddie brock like the only thing i can think of is maybe he just wants to do that to get eddie brock to come out of hiding or have the superheroes hunt eddie down so that way he can find eddie because maybe for some reason out of everyone he's trying to hunt down he can't find eddie they talk about him going into avengers tower and getting caught and the, the officers are like yeah it was almost like he wanted to get caught it seems like cletus you know because he fell from earth or you know, from outer space he's probably not up to date on where all the heroes are right now and what's going on so he's like doing these tactics to kind of like lure them out and it's like okay that makes sense on a level but it's like at the same time I'm like who cares if you frame eddie brock if you're gonna wipe out the world anyway and 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 consume it for null then who cares about framing eddie brock like it's such a stupid thing to have as part of your plan if you're like all right i'm, I'm like when he just goes you know, carnage is like i'm gonna go hunt down the heroes i'm like all right that makes sense that's part of the plan and that you get the heroes out of the way and then null shows up he doesn't have any threats against them and then you can take them all down but to frame eddie brock i'm just like like i said i can see a tactical advantage of that somehow luring him out or getting other heroes to find him for carnage i could see that advantage but still at the same time it's so insignificant because the way he he's acting here is like oh now the whole world's gonna think eddie brock is you know a horrible murdering monster and it's like who can't like why is that part of your plan <laughs> so uh, i don't know maybe that you know it'll get revealed at some point i'm sure and maybe i'll put my foot in my mouth but right now it just seems like a dumb part of his plan so when he turns into this a lot of people were like hey why isn't he if it's cletus cassidy why isn't it carnage and all you really needed was like a couple panels here of him like you know with his back to the camera and you could show the cameras over his shoulders and you could see his face turn into cletus for like one scene and then you could you know then turn it back into eddie or whatever um that's all you really needed to do in the in the art here uh to to kind of like send that home to the readers who were confused um but you know whatever there's twitter i guess to explain your storylines when you can't fit them in a comic book um but anyway so then this you have this giant null monster so this is the grendel and it's piecing itself back together uh with these slivers of symbiotes 
uh, that Carnage is gathering. So that's what Carnage is building. He's building himself into the Grendel, and he's going to be, I guess, the new Grendel uh, as Carnage. He's going to still call himself Carnage, uh, but he's going to be the new Grendel for Null and his arrival, I guess. So I guess that's the big plan. And I'm still thinking that Absolute Carnage is only going to be the halfway point of the story. I feel like this is almost structured in the way Jeff Johns structured his like Green Lantern run, where it's like uh, the it starts off the arc and it changes everything you know or introduces new things, and then you get uh, the Sinestro Core War, and that's what Absolute Carnage feels like. And then I feel like after that there'll be like another year or so of stories, and then they'll end with like blackest night aka you know like the the null uh, you know null arriving or something like that so uh, i don't know that's just how i'm uh, that's my initial gut instinct with how this story is paced and everything um but anyway, it's some of it's kind of neat. I love the artwork, obviously. Uh, so Carnage, a.k.a. the Grendel now, is uh, loose. He kills a couple helicopter pilots and sends them all down. Apparently killed everybody in Rikers, or most people in Rikers. Uh, they, they're not really clear on that. And then later on, he's up on a building, and he's saying, like, oh, who should I go after next? Should I go after Toxin? Which is, that's interesting, because I, I don't know where Toxin is right now, so that's kind of neat that they mention that. Um, Osborn, because Osborn obviously stole the Carnage symbiote at one point. Or the Life Foundation brats, which I'm, you know, he's uh, referring to the the life foundation symbiotes i guess um but you know some of them i think some of them are still alive but scream isn't so i'm wondering if they're going to find a way to bring scream back too along with those uh, i'm not sure but then when he's trying to figure out who he should go after first spider-man happens to swing by and he's like oh yes that'll do just fine so it looks like his hunt is going to begin with spider-man uh so yeah i mean the book overall i mean this issue was kind of fun it's free it's it's awesome to read anything for free it's it's cool that they do this kind of stuff on free comic day to uh, get these new stories out there and these new concepts out there and try to get new fans people who maybe aren't reading uh venom or spider-man you know right now this is a good way to introduce them to that and then the avengers one that came out that jerry duggan did is a great way to you know introduce people into the concept of savage avengers so these are fun for that reason i really you know appreciate that marvel and dc and all these companies do these free comic book day books it's really awesome like i said it's like christmas to me celebrating this every year um but you know i do have some criticisms still as always and I feel like I'm never going to run out of criticisms on this book. There are some things I give a pass to um, in other books that I, you know, like, like that I like right now. Um, I'll be like, oh, I'll give that a pass because it's not consistently making me question or infuriating me. Whereas this kind of run does sometimes. Uh, but I know some of you guys are eating it up and you love it. And obviously that's what this show's about. It's not just about my opinion, it's about yours. So please let your opinion be known down below. Have you read this issue? What did you think? Does it get you excited for this new event coming up? What do you think of Cletus Cassidy being the new Grendel? Um, you know, was it clear to you that uh, that it wasn't Eddie Brock the whole time? That it was actually Cletus Cassidy? Um, I felt, like I said, it seemed pretty clear to me because it's in the dialogue. But sometimes I know people want the art to show it because some people are flipping through and just mesmerized by the art and the words aren't sinking in and connecting as well as the visuals are. So sometimes you want both people telling the story in the comic to, you know, do their part, uh, you know, to help, you know, tell the story in the clearest way possible. So I can understand some of the criticisms out there. I don't share that. I understood that it was not uh, Eddie Brock, but I know some of you guys maybe thought it was. So if that is the case, let me know down below and let me know if I clarified anything for you or if Donnie Cates himself did on Twitter, if you follow him on there. And if you don't, please do. Him and Ryan Stegman are awesome guys. And just because I criticize their stuff doesn't mean I don't like them on a personal level. I don't know them on a personal level, uh, but this is just, you know, me telling you what I think of the book and what I think of their run so far and overall though i would say since this is free pick it up get a copy digital or print whatever you can do pick it up and read it today and let me know your thoughts down below thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace